G'day Ziggy D here and today I'm going to be looking at some Guild Wars 2 tips, tricks and mechanics that you may have missed. Some of these tips have been featured in my 2 minute tips series which I'll link to in the description below. Many of them however are too small for their own video so I wanted to do one all encompassing video. Remember to leave a comment saying which ones you missed. Holding control while doing heart quests or just travelling about the world will display the names of the things you can harvest, pick up, interact with or kill. This makes finding the things you need to do to level much, much easier. In the inventory, you can deposit all of your collectibles to your bank in two clicks by clicking the gear icon at the top right and clicking deposit all collectibles. This is one of those mechanics where every time it is discussed, somebody face palms because they've been traveling to town hundreds of times uh, to deposit their collectibles. Leave a comment if this was you. You can tell whether you are in range to use your skills by looking for red bars below the skill icon in the user interface. If the red bar is there, then it means you are out of range. This is especially helpful if you have multiple skills with varying ranges. Gathering tools provide no benefit when used on lower tier harvesting nodes. If you plan on farming a lower zone for materials, then it may be worth buying the correct tier tool for that zone. The Guild Wars 2 wiki is your friend for finding out which tier requires which tools. If you hear an NPC talking or shouting, make an effort to talk to them. Many NPCs will spawn a single event or event chain, and some can even lead to hidden events. There is a lot more to Guild Wars 2 than first meets the eye. As mentioned on my previous salvaging video, vendor or sell blue and green gear on the trading post. The vendor price alone is nearly always worth more than the value of the materials you can salvage. You can ping or draw on the world map or mini map by holding shift and clicking or clicking and dragging. You can also set a personal point of interest by holding alt and clicking. Your party members can see these on their own maps so they are a useful communication tool. You can perform a dodge jump by pressing dodge and jump at exactly the same time whilst moving in a direction. This trick allows you to jump a bit further but more importantly it allows you to jump the full distance while afflicted by movement reducing conditions. On that note, it's a good idea to disable double tap to evade. This prevents you from accidentally dodging at inappropriate times, like when doing a jumping puzzle. Once disabled, you can bind dodge to another handy key. I bound mine to one of my spare mouse buttons. You can travel for free to Lion's Arch by using the PvP menu and going to the heart of the mist. From there, simply take the free Asura Gate to Lion's Arch. Doing this will also allow you to travel for free to any home city by using the Asura Gates in Lion's Arch. You can quickly cast an Area of Effect ability by positioning your mouse cursor and double tapping the AoE ability hotkey. This is especially useful for classes like Thieves that prefer not to use fast cast ground targeting. On that note, you can enable fast cast ground targeting in the game options menu. This allows you to bypass the second click required to cast AoE abilities. This can require some practice to get used to, but it can speed up your play in PvP significantly if you can get used to it. You can move your chat window and minimap to the top of the screen to make them more present in your normal field of view. This option comes down to personal preference as there are advantages to both positions. Red circles on the ground represent harmful area of effects. White circles represent ones that will not affect you. And blue circles are ones that give beneficial effects. Sometimes you can save some silver by buying your trade mastery books from the trading post. Other times they will be more expensive than vendor price. It's well worth checking every now and then as you approach the level where you want to use them. You can try out all of your skills before purchasing them by going to the heart of the mist area from the PvP menu. There are also practice dummies you can try them on. The same goes for traits as there are unlimited free respects for PvP in the mist zone. Swiftness does not stack in effect. The highest swiftness instead overrides the lower ones. They do, however, stack in duration. This is especially important for elementalists using air attunement. The move speed cap is 33%. You can enable auto loot from the options menu. This means you only need to press F once to loot. You should be picking up pretty much everything anyway since vendors are frequent, bag space is large and because you can easily deposit all of your collectibles. Crafting gives you experience as a percentage of your current level. As such, each crafting skill can give you a maximum of 10 levels. You can use this knowledge to save your crafting for when the game feels like it's getting hard. You can even start off by selecting a crafting profession that you aren't interested in the long term. You can level it for a few levels, and then later switch to the one that you are interested in doing in the long run. It only costs money to go back to old professions, not to learn new ones. An interesting fact is that it's possible to level a character to level 80 using only crafting, though it would be very expensive to do so. Finally, never pat a burning dog. 
That's it for today. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.